Hey folks, welcome back to our podcast. My name is Evan Iglarsh, and I'm joined with three of my closest peers. We have Peter Trevisano, give a quick wave. We got Liam Asiag. What do you do? Facial hair since, uh, since we left. And the beautiful Amanda Copas. And I'm oh, your host, sweet. Evan Iglarsh. Today we have some stuff to discuss. We're going to be discussing the movie City of God, a movie made the year most of us were born. 2002, directed by Katia Loon and Fernando Morellis. Peter, I know you have a lot to say, which is why I'd love to start with you and some of your input here, and then we'll follow. Yeah, so I, I think uh, since we didn't have much literary content to actually follow with the movie this time, I think it's very important to actually deal with the significance of pictures and uh, symbols. Considering this, uh, there's many symbols and I feel like they, the directors do a very good job at timing. And um, regarding timing, I think we should think about the 20 second interval of just a chair, a rocking chair in the, in the shanty town of City of Gods from the 60s. Uh, a lot of people, whenever they uh, think about dreams, a lot of people are actually and analyzers of their own dreams and whenever they analyze their dreams and they see a rocking chair it's supposed to signify um a terrible thing that's about to happen but if you were to actually look into city of gods the book it uh resembles a sort of peace overcoming as the three uh the trio the tender trio uh actually finish their last job and sp- you know, go their own ways, whether it goes good or bad for all of them, they have ended something that was terribly brutal and violent and go into this sort of peaceful interval of their life. And um, although 66% of them died, uh, you know, we see that one third (laughs) actually became very religious and found himself with God through that vision that he had. And, you know, the vision is always a symbol of just kind of prophetic look into the future and past at the same time uh, regarding your life and what you've done wrong and what you can do to amend those wrongs. And you see visions a lot in movies and, you know, they can come in different ways. They can come in a dream. They can come even in a, you know, a daydream. And I think that's where what I said about uh, having to look at, you know, dream analysis and uh, actual movie analysis comes hand in hand. I mean, if you think about it, a dream is kind of like a movie playing in your brain. And a lot of people spend their whole lives analyzing dreams. So um, I think that these are very important symbols. Do you have any other symbols, guys? Beautiful. Anyone else want to jump in with a symbol or anything else about the movie that you'd like to discuss? Uh, yeah, I could, I could talk about um, Rocket and just all the symbols that he kind of has to, to his Speak character. up a little. First, Sorry. First off, Rocket is, is a great... <laughs> no, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, like Rock, Rocket carries around a, 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 a camera, right? And, and the camera, like, he, what he did was is he refined his talent so he was able to escape. And what's significant about that and connects to his name is that his name is Rocket, which is also a thing that you use to, like, escape. Like, we leave to, I don't know, like, we leave the Earth. Like, yeah, I, I, I get what you're Earth. saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're talking, like, the camera's escape is his escape as well as the name being kind of, like, escape. And, and it's his escape at the, at the end of the movie as as well he made the outside world want him and and that's just kind of a a beautiful thing because he took a little bit of good in something and it went a long way yeah it's kind of that it's oh sorry amanda no i just want to say like he's saying like rocket honestly he's like a spot of good in the world like that they're in of bad because he's not vengeful he's like he has a moral compass and we even see this when, like, Benny starts dating Angelica. He isn't jealous. Well, he is jealous, but he doesn't have, like, vengeance like most of the people in the film have. Like, he's yeah. still fine with them and has a relationship with them. Well, it's, co- it's that common boys in the hood motif where, uh, you know, the, 
the young studious one who you know was raised correctly and had the right morals becomes the one who overcomes all the events that go around him where he could have easily you know one of the one of the actual narrative uh episodic narratives is um i think it's called flirting with um flirting with crime and you know that's perfectly said because that's exactly what he was doing and he he didn't think he was uh actually a criminal or a hood as they say he he just thought you know since all of my closest friends and peers and my brother have fallen to this terrible thing that's just that's just like a virus in our city i think i should maybe try it and you know he's too morally good to um to actually fall into it and yeah so well peter yeah that actually leads me exactly into what i was going to say uh first of all both what liam and amanda said is um is gold i i enjoy what you both what you both brought to the table and i really enjoyed this movie the first time around i watched it for the action second time around i really uh was able to look at sort of the motifs the things that we're talking about now and i love the way that the movie presents this sort of cyclical um, situation to us. And what Peter just said about the hoods staying as they are young boys growing up and seeing some violence, growing up, becoming older and seeing, you know, the full violence and the truth of what this city is. Um, at one point, uh, Shaggy's uh, girlfriend says, uh, hoods don't stop. They take a break. Yeah, And that sort of represents you know, a lot of these guys, how no matter how hard they try and, you know, stop and leave or just stop, it, it's so hard for them. And that's just what Liam was saying. When, when Rocket at one point um, says at the very end, he says, um, I decided to get out. That's why I became a reporter, right? He's one of the lucky few, but the movie shows um, really the, how serious the whole situation and the reality of these young boys were. Um, I, I'm, Peter, how are we doing on time? Because there's one more thing I'd like to talk about. Well, I want to I want to regard that saying that um, yeah. I'm going to bring back to Boys in the Hood how uh, uh, Ice Cube's character, um, I forget what his name was. I think it was like Big Boy or something. He uh, tried to get out after he killed his brother's murderer, and he just couldn't. You know, he's gonna he's he's gonna die in that in that mm-hmm. uh, way of life. And that's really what it is, is a way of life. Some people, and that's what they really make a good parallel about, is they show two ways of life, of how to live. It's either you do it the criminal way and sell drugs, and they, they showed a whole uh, managerial tree of how you start out as you know a seller, and then you work up as uh, the money guy, and then you become a manager, you know? And it's exactly like, uh, those mark grocery stores that Rocket was working in. Peter, what do you what do you guys think about the fact that they didn't even they were in Rio and they didn't even show the uh, the famous statue that represents? Yeah, Jesus. that's and, crazy. Um, well, that's I mean the statue is a very religious theme, and if you if you look at it, the city of God is the complete opposite. So it's almost like. Um, Jesus has turned his back on the city of God. And it's very, it's a very, um, it's a very ironic name to have because at first it was believed to be, you know, a new start for a lot of Brazilians who don't have money. Government was making this huge city for them to live and thrive with new work and stuff. And now they've just turned it into this total, you know, like fest station of drugs yeah. and war so yeah it's just a parallel would you have Literally. to say evan before before we ran out of time yeah just uh, there's so much on my mind i was going to talk about uh the way it was filmed and how they use 16 um millimeter film instead of you know traditional um wider you know how it's more narrowed which yeah. Because it is, it is a movie from 2002. I mean, similar movies that came out in 2002 were like Harry Potter. Harry Potter See, I, came out in 2001. Yeah, I, I disagree. Um, it was 100% the director's choice to use a smaller... Uh, oh, yeah. Which, which did two things. It made the film of a lesser quality. 
Lee, you know, which is completely represented in the plot. And then what it also does is it makes it more vertically, it makes it more box themed instead of uh, like a rectangle theme, which puts us there with the story. It invites the watcher to be more, you know, included into the story. I think that's a hundred percent a choice of the director. It wasn't a choice of the time period. Well, they also use like different colors. Like in the beginning, they use like the golden yellow, mm-hmm. and then towards the like end, they start using when it becomes like more aggressive and dark. It becomes dark and blue, mm-hmm. and then at the very end, when we're with Rocket, it's his like perspective with the like dizzying camera work and like everything like that. Yeah. And that's what like darker through the film. You think? Yeah. What? That's why it like gets darker. The filter of the screen gets darker throughout the film because it's from his perspective, and he's like seeing kind of the darkness of where he lives. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um. Yeah. What I was saying about the Harry Potter thing was that they could have chosen a very high aspect ratio, and they could have made it very HD quality. It wasn't like they didn't have the ability to. They they chose to make it as shitty as the oh, sound. Yeah, I misunderstood what you were saying. You were agreeing with me. So, and they yeah. also use like a real town. Yeah, they yeah, and they used real actors, which is very important. I mean, it, it's just uh, they tried to fully immerse you in how crazy the times were, and how I mean, you see children getting shot and killed for petty theft. I mean, it's it's no joke, and they they tried to make it as real as possible. And I think the word real just kind of encompasses the uh total theme of the movie is just real and intense well i think that that is the perfect note to end on of course we can go on talking about this for hours thank you to each and every one of you for uh, joining us here Uh, mr gross we love you hopefully you enjoyed listening to our conversation peter thank you for hosting this peace out